Smell that? It's time for a swing dance reaction video. No. 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 Yes! Greetings and salutations. Welcome to Street Smart Swing. My name is Jamin Jackson, also known as the Galactic Swing Dance Umpire, and I am super excited to be scrutinizing another Lindy Hop competition. This is from Dark Blue Swing Exchange, solo finals competitions. You guys know how I feel about solo finals. I love it. So let's get right into it. And here we go. Let's get right into this one. <clears throat> Ooh, I like that logo. Dark blue. I don't see any dark blue people. Okay, so this is free for all. Maybe it's an introduction. But typically, uh, I like these battle formats when they come out in the middle. I can focus one at a time at them, but it still captures the energy. Okay, bend over to the front, touch your toes. They even do that in solo jazz. Okay, so far, <clears throat> the winner out of these four is clearly the gentleman in the plaid jacket. And that is because, as you can see, the upper body is isolated more than the lower body. And he's doing clearly vintage steps that are easy to be perceived. I like her energy, but as you can see, there's a whole lot of upper body movement that doesn't give me a clear focus on what vintage aspect I should be focusing on. Legs, upper body. You can have swagger, but not at the expense of the moves. <clears throat> okay. So, so far the two winners, uh, the gentleman with the plaid checkered uh, jacket, and this leader, this gentleman here with the white shirt, suspenders. What I like again is he's keeping his upper body quiet. He's doing a lot of the vintage moves that I can clearly see. The only difference between the leader with the plaid jacket and the one with the suspenders is the one with the plaid jacket has a lot more confidence. <clears throat> he's looking up at me as the audience member. Now I can appreciate the leader with the suspenders for the rhythms, but he's not making me feel the rhythms. Now I'm an experienced dancer, so I'm looking at them and trying to interpret what he's doing. But he's got to sell it to me with his body. He's got to show me that it's worth looking at. <clears throat> it's no easy task. So let's see, Like I guess that was the warm up so far. Maybe they'll do another uh, individual set. But so far, my winner is a gentleman in the checkered uh, jacket. Okay, are these more dancers coming? Let's see. Okay, this looks like a round two. So round one, gentleman in the checkered jacket. <clears throat> it's my winner. Let's see who comes out swinging. Whoop, whoop. <laughs> they kind of playing around.
Okay, right now the winner for me is the, the lady with the green uh, shoes on. <coughs> Okay, this lady with uh, this dress on with the red collar, she's also doing a great job <coughs> with her Charleston. The reason it looks good is because I can identify it as the Charleston and not top rocking, which is a hip hop thing. Okay, the leader with the gray jacket clearly has skills. The only thing that's not enchanting is he's not selling me. He's not looking at me at all. As an audience member and as a judge, I don't know why I should look, even though I can respect the skills. So as this one has gone along, I really uh, would say the winner for me is between, uh, from both sets, the gentleman with the gray jacket and the follower with the red collar. <clears throat> and I would give her the slight edge. <laughs> yeah, that was good. That was good. Yeah, improvisation and these kind of environments are really important to me. Because it says, yeah, if you can actually do solo jazz, it's not all pre-programmed to present to me in this nice, perfect package. And that's not how the jazz music was created. It was improvised in many cases. <clears throat> I want to see more from the girl in the green shoes. But, but she's allowing her style and silliness to overshadow the good she's doing with dancing and so my attention now is still going to the girl in the front with the red collar because she's still actually doing vintage jazz moves not at the expense she's not using her swagger to override the moves she's using her swagger to embellish the moves <clears throat> so clearly now as time has progressed uh i like the girl with the red collar yeah, she, she sold me. This is good. How many others? Well, that's good. Some friendly competition. No one's like threatening to harm each other. Okay, so let's look. This looks like it is the finals. Uh, possibly. Or like maybe like a semi-final. So let's see what happens. Okay, so <clears throat> clearly my eyes still go to the gentleman with the, ja the jacket that's colored. <clears throat> Even though he's looking down at the ground, he's smiling. I see that it's part of his style. But clearly I can see the jazz moves. Lower body is moving more than the upper body. Okay, uh, in this case, the follower with the uh, green shoes, lady here in the black dress, I think sh her personality is doing more. <clears throat> the, uh, the leader's personality here, the guy with the gray pants. But, but they're both not selling me when it comes to the jazz movements. I can't see enough basic movements. Okay, this is leader again. In the jacket, I see Charleston, <clears throat> I see fancy footwork, I see swagger and personality, I see campiness, which is not necessarily something everyone has to do, but I see the consistency of his personality uh, complement 
the jazz movements. He's not doing too much of his personality and not doing enough of the jazz movement. So I like him. He's my winner. <laughs> so I think the judge is pulling him back. Oh, is that Petter? It might be. Yeah, it looks like it. I don't know. Okay, even the silliness, I can still determine the winner, even in the silliness. Just look at the upper body, and you can see it. If the upper body is moving too much, it doesn't look as vintage, for whatever reason. I can't explain that, it's just what it is. Okay. <laughs> All right. Come on, audience. Woo! See, the audience tells the truth. They're not feeling it, and they're tired. They're not going to fake it. I love that because I'm I'm part of the audience too. So, what does this competition mean to me? Uh, as if I, if I was judging it, which I was judging it. Uh, I clearly have to go straight to those things in solo jazz that are not subjective. And those are those elements that actually make it look solo jazz. So I explained to you all many times, in order to make your movements look as if they're from the 1920s through the 40s, you'll have to isolate your upper body. And that's because of the tap influence of that particular time. As dance forms begin to shift later, you know, late 50s, 60s, 70s, 80s, and all the way to today, you start to see a gradual transition from the focus on the lower body to the upper body doing a lot more movement. So if a person can dance and they can't isolate their upper body, I immediately take points off of them because they, they clearly cannot see why their movements would look a certain way to match uh, the vintage time period. That's just a, a deeper understanding that a lot of dancers will understand after they put in the hard work to get really good at it. They may not be able to explain that's what it is, but some kind of way they chisel away all that movement and they quiet down this upper body. So when I'm looking at this, there is a clear winner, folks. There is a clear winner when it comes to this objective part of solo jazz. And that goes to the gentleman with the gray jacket. He had checkered jacket. I knew as soon as I looked at him that he was different from the other dancers. And if you really think about the comments I made in regards to isolating the upper body, you too will be able to analyze what I said from that lens and see, ah, that's right. That, that's why it looks a certain way. Now that way of what it looks like is vintage. That's what I'm looking for is a solo jazz, a vintage, authentic, vernacular jazz style. And so that's the first thing I go to. So clearly no one else came as close to that leader uh, in doing that. <clears throat> he was the leading dancer. So all of my judgment stopped after that. I'm not looking at uh, their energy level. I'm not looking at what they actually chose to do in terms of their movements with the music because that's important to me also. But I didn't look at any of those additional judgment attributes that I would cling to if it were a bit more competitive. I just didn't have to do that. And that's kind of great for me as a judge. I don't have to pay attention as much, but it's not good for dancers to not know why I was just simply ignoring you. And that's number one, I gotta see the quietness of the upper body. If that's there, you're at least in my top three. Top two, top three have those particular qualities that are prominent in their movement. Second thing I like to look for is timing with the music to see if you can match many of your moves with the most loudest phrases in the music. And that tends to be the transitional eight count. The four eight counts, you've got those three as the buildup. The fourth one is that transitional one. And typically, if a dancer is doing something different, it stands out. Because honestly, I want to hear the music and I want to see the dancing match. 
so that both are amplifying each other. It's not just the dancer taking away from the music or the music just making me pay attention to it because the dancing is not as good. I don't, I don't want that. So if a dancer can do the control part and they have the timing part, it really helps. That's usually second place. And the first place person definitely has the style, the swagger, the creativity, things that we haven't seen before, uh, the confidence, those, those other areas that you have to look for. But as I said, I don't necessarily even have to go there if the control part of the competition hasn't been established uh, well with the dancers. And that leader, I don't know his name, let me know his name in the comment section, but he crushed it. He was the just got out there and he killed doing the vintage style so that if I looked at his silhouette, I would know this isn't a gimmick. I know he was probably a vintage dancer. And I like that. So anyway... Uh, what do you guys think about this competition? Who do you think should have won this competition? Am I just simply delusional for telling the truth and giving you a reason why I judge a certain way? Because you know, us judges have a way of judging. But unfortunately, you don't get a chance to know what that is. You just get to be scrutinized and judged. And then typically we'll go into our room and prepare for classes and you just simply never know. Or it's just a, an opinion. Like, hey, I didn't like their style. And for me, that's okay if you're in the position of judge, but I think it is a bit it is a bit not fair because liking someone's style or not is just your preference, but it doesn't actually point us to what is a good standard for someone to model after if they're wanting to learn solo jazz. Because honestly, that's the objective part we don't really talk about. So if you're wanting to learn that objective part, just to kind of understand how to make your moves look vintage and do a lot of the older movements the right way, I would encourage you to check out some of my free courses. I got about 25 different courses below. Uh, most of them are partner dances, but I do have a lot of the vintage solo jazz routines that are included. Not just the vintage ones, but I also have some modern routines that are focused on the vintage style that were created from other teachers so that you can get a chance to practice and make your movements actually look like they fit the time period because there is a reason why some people win more than others um, if I'm judging. I can't speak for everybody else, but I'm gonna tell you that objective part that many people will not say is objective. They'll give other reasons that I might clearly point out and say that's really subjective. That doesn't necessarily apply 100% to every dancer. But I will tell you, isolating the upper body is one of the common denominators. If you understand how to do that, you're just going to be in a different league when being judged by uh, professionals. So there you have it, guys. That's my opinion. Let me know what you thought about this competition in the comments sections. I actually thought it was really fun. I didn't see anything that was extraordinarily different, but I did see one solid dancer for me that respects the art form enough to master knowing the way it should look and not losing his personality in the midst of that. So with that said, guys, let me know what your comments are in the comment section. If I don't see you in uh, one of my classes online, hopefully I'll get a chance to see your comments soon. Take care.